Hello again, and today we're going to talk about several verses. The first one up, though, is Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. It's the golden rule. If you don't know it, here it is. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. No matter where you go in the world and who you deal with, you're always going to have to deal with certain people who say one thing, but then act another way also known as hypocrites. And for the Jews in Jesus' day, this really wasn't any different. They had certain people, the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, the elders, the high priests, uh, who talked one way but then acted another. Jesus actually condemns those people for putting burdens on the people that they weren't even willing to bear themselves. They weren't very good keepers of the golden rule. And so when Jesus comes on the scene in the Gospels, and especially here in the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 7, when he's talking to all these people sitting out in front of him, it must have really been a breath of fresh air. Because what they got to see all throughout Jesus' life was a man who said one thing and then actually went out and did everything that he said. Jesus says that the greatest love that somebody can have for another man or another woman is to lay down their lives, life, 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 for another person. And then what does he do? Oh, he goes out and he does it. The high priest and the Pharisees said that they were great keepers of the law, but yet Turns out, uh, not so much. Jesus says, I've come to fulfill the law and the prophets, and that's exactly what he did. Jesus was showing them a new example about what a teacher should be, and he was finally going to free these people from uh, the Pharisees and the priests lording over them all the time. So what's really interesting is that when we get to Matthew chapter 27, and the crucifixion's about to happen, and Jesus is on trial, who is it that persuades the people to ask for Jesus' death? It's the high priests and the elders of the Jews. So you may say, wait a second, wait, what? So, so the people who have been oppressed are now turning against the one who's come to free them and allowing the oppressors to influence them to destroy the one who had brought them hope. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And so we read the story of the New Testament and these Jews and we're like, man, these people are stupid. So now it's time to drive home some application. And my question to you is this. If it's so stupid... Why do you make the same decision in your life? What? Who? Me? I've never done something that dumb. Oh, really? Think about the story of the Bible. The Bible tells us that we are all under bondage. We're all stuck. We're all oppressed by something. And what is that? Sin. And we're tempted by Satan to sin. And for all these years, under the Old Testament, uh, and even now without Christ, we're oppressed by that sin. We're in slavery to it. And there's someone who's come on the scene... Jesus, to give us a breath of fresh air. Ah, finally, freedom from my oppression. But guess what? Even though that now we are in Christ and we have been made free, a lot of us still look behind us. We look at temptations that we enjoyed in the past or maybe new things that appeal to us. Uh, We look at the things that Satan offers. The one who oppressed us is working very hard to convince us to join his side, just like the priests tried to pull the people back from Jesus to join their side. And if he convinces us through some temptation to join his side, even if it's just for a moment, what we've done is that we find ourselves having made the same dumb decision that the Jews on the day of the crucifixion made. We have traded a beautiful Savior who has set us free to return to our bondage under sin. Ah, dumb. And this is part of the reason that we're all guilty of the crucifixion, not just the Jews that were there that day, because we've all made the same dumb decision. And so when you're faced with temptation, one good way to deal with that is to look back at the crucifixion day and to see those Jews and and see how obvious it is to us that they made the wrong decision, that they listened to the wrong people. They listened to the people that didn't even care about them. And then reverse that back to our lives to make the application and to say, I'm not going back to the people who oppressed me and mistreated me and brought me into slavery. I'm sticking with Jesus who brings that freedom of the fresh message. I think everybody probably knows that it's easier to look at other people and figure out what they did right or wrong in a particular situation than it is for us to look into our own lives. But that can be a tool. Right? And, and it's a lesson to us that sometimes we need to get out of what's immediately in front of us. Uh, look to the lives of other people to bring clarity back into our lives and our decisions. 
Hi again, everyone, and thank you for watching To Be Like Christ. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and share this video so as many people can see this as possible. Uh, once again, I just wanted to reiterate my thanks and my appreciation to everybody who supported me and uh, left nice comments or just anyone who watches these videos. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.